So today we're talking about a really important topic, interest rate risk in the banking book or IRRBB. And IRRBB is part of the market risk management of banks. I've already made a video on pillar one market risk management, explaining what market risk management is and what banks do in pillar one. And IRRBB, however, is part of the pillar two market risk management. If you don't know what pillar one and pillar two are, look at my video on Basel three. There I explain the difference between both approaches. To recap what we said in the last video, we said in the last video that for market risk management, it's really important to make a distinction between assets which fall into the trading book and assets which fall into the banking book. Quick reminder, assets in the trading book are held for short term trading and assets in the banking book are held long term. And in the last video, so the video on market risk in banks, we said that all assets in the trading book and the risk factors exchange rates and commodity prices are managed by calculating risk weighted assets. Okay, so we can actually for those assets we can and those risk factors, we can actually calculate risk weighted assets by using a formula that is given by the banking regulation and we obtain a risk weighted assets measure, which in turn tells us how much equity we need to cover the risk. However, interest rate risk in the banking book now is concerned with changing credit spreads and interest rates in the banking book, right? I mean, so in IRRBB, we're trying to understand, do changing interest rates actually affect all assets which belong to the banking book, okay? And I will give you a quick example showing you why this is important and how banks are doing it. So let's look at a very simple balance sheet of a bank, right? On the equity and liability side, we have a deposit. And on the asset side, we have a simple loan. And what you see down here is the cash flow profile of this simple balance sheet. When we consider the loan, the loan is given out by the bank to a third party and the third party pays interest for four years and then it pays back the loan in year five. The deposit is where the bank lended money, right? So the bank has to pay 1.5 euros interest in the first years and the bank has to repay the full deposit in the third year, right? So this is the cash flow structure of this balance sheet. And in IRRBB, there are two perspectives to understanding the risk that this balance sheet encompasses when it comes to market risk. And the first perspective is the so-called expected value perspective or EV perspective. And the expected value perspective is concerned with the value of the balance sheet in year zero or at present. And to calculate the value of both assets, we simply use the formula for valuation for bonds. Yeah, I will make a separate video on why this formula actually makes sense. But here in this simple example, we assume that the European Central Bank sets an interest rate of 0%, okay? 0%, right? Just as a disclaimer. Right? That means that we can actually value our loan rather simple by just adding the cash flows. So our loan is just 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 103, which is 115. And our deposit is valued at minus 1.5, minus 1.5, minus 100. And 1.5, which is equal to minus 104.5. Yeah, this means the value of all our assets on the balance sheet is equal to the sum of those, which is plus 100 plus 10.5. Yeah. So when it comes to the EV perspective, everything is fine. 
Yeah, our balance sheet has a positive value, meaning if our bank is in distress or if our bank has financial problems because something else happened, they can just sell off all their assets and they actually make a profit, right? So the EV perspective tells us from a risk perspective, this is rather good, right? So we actually have an interest rate structure. We have higher interest rates on, on the asset side than on a liability side, meaning that our bank makes profits and that our loans and deposits actually equal to a positive value. The second perspective is the so-called net operating in net interest income perspective or NII perspective. And this perspective actually looks at the cash flow in time, right? So we would look at this profile here. And what do we see? We see that in the first year, the bank gets three euros and pays 1.5 euros. So that's great, right? We're making a profit here. In the second year, the bank gets three euros and pays 1.5 euros. Great as well. In the third year, the bank gets three euros, but pays 101.5 euros. So we're running into a deep problem here. Right. And we wouldn't have seen this with the expected value perspective. And that's why we look at the cash flows in time in the net operating income perspective. And there we see that the net operating income with this cash flow structure is flawed in year three, right? And so we actually need to take measurements against this. And what the bank would do is the bank would actually think about, oh, I need to get another credit for this year, which I pay off in the following years. Yeah. So this credit would be valued so that the bank actually makes more than 98 euros here and pays some amount here so that it makes a profit in the end, right? Just very briefly, it's not important, right? The important message here is the NII perspective actually tells us we've got a problem in year three, right? And to recap, we're looking at interest rate risk in the banking book. So what you would actually do with those both perspectives is you would look at the status quo and then you would try to understand what actually happens when interest rates change, right? Maybe this loan that you have on your asset side doesn't have a fixed interest rate, but a variable interest rate, right? Maybe it, the interest rate is not 3%, but the interest rate actually is the ECB interest rate, ECB one year interest rate, which you don't know in advance for five years, right? So you could get three euros here, but you also could get maybe only one or you could get 10, right? And what you would do is you would try to assess all of those different possibilities in your both perspectives, right? And if you come to the conclusion that in one of the possibilities or one of the possible future scenarios, your expected value actually is negative, Right? Then you would have to think about, oh, maybe I have too much market risk in my portfolio. I need to take action against it. And taking action would maybe mean just selling off the loan or it would mean buying a derivative that actually manages downside risk on the loan or so on or so on. So maybe quick recap. With interest rate risk in the banking book, we're actually looking at pillar two market risk management. So if we talk about pillar two market risk management, we talk about IRRBB and all the stuff that we're doing in pillar one as well, right? And pillar two actually tries to assess what different interest rates mean for assets in the banking book, right? This is what IRRBB is all about, right? And as you saw, IRRBB has two different perspectives, which, which consider two different problems. The expected value perspective actually tells you what the value is of your portfolio right now, right? And this means if you would have to do a fire sale, if you would have to sell all your assets, do you actually make a profit or do you not make a profit? And the NII perspective actually looks at your cash flows in time and it tells you if you have liquidity gaps in the future, right? And both perspectives tell you if there is risk and if you need to take action, because if there's too much risk involved, you as a risk manager 
at a bank need to take action immediately.